Hello everyone, welcome to Scary Movies. This episode is titled The Magic Fluke, starring the Bills and Patriots, and we're going to feature the opening kickoff return for a touchdown by Jalen Rager, who I just circled on the screen. Why this title? As you all probably know, my stance on the matter is never return a kickoff. Once in a great while, that philosophy proves meaningless when we get this fluke of a play like Jalen Rager's kickoff return TD. Now, if you were to take a look at this particular screen here, this frame, we see Buffalo Bills have the perimeter in such a way that Rager is going to have to collide into this uh, mass of humanity, which actually plays out almost perfectly. Now, one of the other things I'm famous for is my penalty assessments, so I will circle the action right here. I do think this is probably fine for a no call, but we have seen less egregious things called for an illegal block in the back as well. Take that as you will. Again, I think that's a fine no call. Uh, but, you know, for those of you who are looking to blame the officials, there's just a little bit more ammo. Now, again, Rager has to go through this entire um, mass of, of players. We see an excellent block there. We have the possibly illegal block in the back. We have a block here, really good block here. This Patriot has actually fallen down and created basically just a trip hazard, which creates this uh, really extra path uh, for this particular tackle to be made. And we just have all of these things mesh perfectly in one fluke moment to allow him to pass through essentially a crowd of, of, of close to 20 people. And now we have Tyler Bass who does get in the way, does make contact. And what does Rager do? He does a spin move, barely loses any momentum, and now we have a foot race for this. Why are these so rare? When everything goes right, you are still looking at this uh, clutter that a person just has to cut through in almost perfect fashion in order for this to even have a chance. The foot race, all of it, is just such a rare thing. It is truly a fluke. Now, why does this matter, and what's the point of the context for this? Well, I'm going to go through a few screens from profootballreference.com, which is a resource we know I love to link and reference all the time, starting with the scoring offense screen for the 2023 season. And I have this in order of worst to best. We have the top uh, or worst 22 teams in the league for points per game. Some of the commentary towards the end of the, the Buffalo Bills Patriots tilt in week 17 was remarking how the Patriots had scored 21 points, which was much higher than their average and how rarely they even got to 20 points. And that is absolutely true. And I do not want to take away from Jalen Rager's accomplishment because while it is a fluke, he definitely put in a ton of work to get there and he absolutely earned that kickoff return touchdown. But without that, when we take a look at what the Buffalo Bills defense did, the insinuation from the commentary is that that 21 points represents some sort of failure. In reality, the 14 points that the Buffalo Bills defense allowed was pretty much right within average for the New England Patriots. So multiple takeaways, lots of good stops. Is that an achievement or kind of a map performance by the defense? Well, let's take a look at this next screen. Here we have drive averages, again, taken from profootballreference.com. And again, in the same order of worst to best. Now, with the New England Patriots, while they have the least points per game, they have the third least points per drive. So again, pretty bad still, but not worst in the league. 1.17 is definitely the number to take away from uh, these drive averages. Now, why is that important? Well, points per game is a wonderful metric, but game flows can certainly have a lot of differences with takeaways, uh, touchdowns from kickoff returns, things of that nature, the number of drives per game can certainly fluctuate a little bit and create a different number of opportunities. So last but not least from our profootballreference.com is the drives from the game itself. And I really want to focus more on this, the Patriots drive side of things. Although, you know, feel free to take a look at the Bills drives. Those are fun too. But with the Patriots drives, we have, 13 drives that does not include the opening kickoff return uh, touchdown. So we do have 13 drives leading to these two scores. And with those 
drives calculated, the Buffalo Bills defense actually allowed 1.077 points per drive. So I'm going to flip back to this one and again highlight that 1.17. So it's not like this huge jump uh, necessarily. It's it's 0.1 point per drive lower than the Patriots average. But what we find is that the Bills actually forced a per drive average for the Patriots less than the worst team in the league, which is the New York Jets. So when we take a look at the context of the day and the fact that there was extra drives primarily due to we have very short drives that ended in uh, interceptions, uh, fumble, those takeaway drives shortened the Patriots' performance, allowed extra drives. 13 drives in a game is not super common. So we do have an incredible performance overall by the Bills in that they really limited the per drive metrics. And going beyond that, let's take a look at at some of these drives. Most of these are very short. We have a three play drive leading to a punt uh, in between a couple of interceptions. We have another three play drive leading to a punt in the first quarter. Uh, Notice we have seven drives in the first quarter because of these quick takeaways that the Buffalo Bills had. That is incredibly rare. And then we have uh, their one touchdown drive, the first touchdown drive, two minutes, 52 seconds. Not terribly long, so they knew they needed to get going. They needed something to happen, and they did so pretty quickly. We have a nine-play drive leading uh, to about four minutes of game clock with a missed field goal. And then we have the end of the half uh, play where really nothing much happened there. And this is remarkable. So after 10 first half drives, the New England Patriots only had three drives in the second half, which is astonishing. A major component of that is this 11 play, 7 minute and 41 second drive. Their first of the third quarter ended in a punt. Their net yards was 36, which is insane to have an 11 play half of a quarter drive lead to less of a third of the field or rough, sorry, roughly a third of the field is just incredible. Uh, Nickel and dime did not work by any means there. We have another drive that does end in a touchdown and then another three and out basically for the New England Patriots. So while the Buffalo Bills did allow a couple of good drives, uh, it's really hard to keep an NFL team completely off the board. And again, The whole point of this video is flukes count, flukes certainly matter, but when we take a look at the overarching analysis for a game, flukes are important to put into context. So although, again, those points do stay on the board, they were earned absolutely 100%. The Patriots deserve that score. Taking a look at those or removing it from the equation does give us an idea of what their team did on a per drive or or a per game basis. Hope you had fun with this one. We're heading into a big week 18 matchup with the Miami Dolphins. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and remember, some flukes will go our way too. Hopefully, we'll see a few of those as we forge our way into the playoffs and through them. Fingers crossed. Go Bills. See you next time.